الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Last time we spoke a little bit about the kayfiya the hal the maqam of khushu which is something to be desired it is fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but fear of allah ta'ala with reverence with humility and it brings with it a certain kind of sakina as well khawf in general does not have calmness with it but when we talk about khushu khushu is reverence but with that sakina with that calmness there's a big difference between that. And so khushu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something to be desired is something that we should ask Allah ta'ala give us especially when it comes to our salah when we stand up in salah the haybat of Allah ta'ala is there but with that haybat you know there is that sukoon tamaniyat that also comes with it and something related to that is you know what we call ikhbat which is also submissiveness but not something that is forced but it has the sakina with it it's, it's serene in nature and so khushu is fear with reverence and humility and ikhbat would be submissiveness um, and with comfort there's there's sukoon in that there's tamani in that so why does a person develop that because now the ma'arif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to increase and so what we call the comfort zone of a person develops as well that we are comfortable in that position um, of azmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that would be submissive you know that you, you, you withdraw your instincts and your desires of the nafs you know you become docile in nature you develop your character but now you're comfortable in that position and so the good thing about that is um that a sort of protection from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes with that because now you're comfortable in it people don't feel the wahsha there is the protection from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in general if you remember one of the things that we were supposed to do in this ramadan was keep an eye on our own nafs's resistance right? for example if you know somebody says you have to pray like 100 rakats nafl tonight look at what your how your nafs reacts to that right? so there's a resistance there's hesitancy there but with this kind of submissiveness that hesitate you know, hesitation is in there you know in urdu what they call it's like qalandarana tabiat you know we're talking you know this whole mashallah ibrahim alayhi salam and, You know, what an amazing subhanallah nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so in our language they call him with the kalandarana tabiyya meaning there's no hesitation like when he jumped into the fire there was no hesitation and you know people have written great ashar on that ye be khatar koot pada aatish e namrood mein ishq that without any khatar khatar means that this internal hesitation if you want to call it that it jumped into the fire of numrud what jumped into the fire of numrud is <laughs> is and aqal is standing on the side with it you know with his finger in his in his mouth you know that huh what just happened aqal is just standing and wondering what so this kalandarana to be this a very innate <laughs> thing you know and this is when like your qalb really rules supreme over your other faculties and your qalb has the inama in it and has muhabba in it and has ishq in it and so the result is that 
when the khushu develops within that and you know then there's no hesi- hesitation to do anything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's really what we want to be. Um, and, you know, I was looking at the um, the ayah of the Qur'an. It's in Surah Hajj. You know, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your God is one God, right? فَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاهِدٌ فَلَهُ أَسْلِمُ This is the taslim that is, that is required from us. Who, you know, who, who has to, you know, we have to, obviously, well, what within us has to do the sleen, submit is the nafs. Nafs does not want to do the sleen. It does not want to do the sleen. Hmm? This is where the muhabba comes in because it really puts the nafs into check. And going back to the difference between Naqsbandiya, Majadatiya, Suluk, and others, when the heart is filled with that kind of muhabba, any kind of sacrifice becomes easy. You know, the example given is usually that of a mother. When a mother who yearns for a child, and let's say after 10 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses her with the child, you don't have to tell her, you don't have to convince her to make sacrifices for the child. You don't have to convince her to wake up at night and you know, she, all she worries about day in and day out is my child. Has my child eaten? Has my child you know, worn, worn clothes? Is my child okay? What is that? Yeah. How is the nafs getting control here with that muhabba? Sacrifice in qurbani becomes easy. Same thing here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? So the bisharat has been given to those people who do what? Good, you know, good tidings, glad tidings to the humble submitters. Mukhbitin is people who develop this humbleness and willingly submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, the next ayah talks about some of their signs. It's one of those really beautiful ayahs. These are the people that their hearts are shaking and trembling hmm? with awe. And same thing with the haiba. So how is that related with the khushu? This ikhbat is related to that that their hearts are filled with awe when the name of Allah I mean, imagine just the name is mentioned. So what would their hal be when they are standing up in salah? What would their hal be, you know, when they're doing other ibadat? If just by the mere mention of the name, their hearts are, subhanAllah, filed with awe. You know, some of our mashayikh say, unke kalb wajad mein aajat. Right? That's what happens. That, you know, it's, can't control it. Peer Hulam Habib sahab kehte the na, you know, ki handi ubalati. You know, sometimes you have a pressure cooker and and then if it's too pressure, you know, it just comes out. That's what wajilat kulubuhim kulubuhim is. You know, it just overflows with with that feeling. And these are the mukhbitin. Right? Allah Akbar Kabira, and who are patient in whatever may befall them. Sabr to hai, but sabirin adama sabahum. So on and so forth. So, I mean, these are the signs of, of those people who have these qualities. And so, you know, we should, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah ta'ala blesses us with that, you know, some of the signs that a person has that, that you know, there is, as I said, there's a hifaza from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because now the nafs is in a state of comfort. Now the desires, the shahwat of the nafs don't really bother such a person. It, it doesn't mean they're, they don't exist. Of course, there's, it's still there. But the way that it has become like a distraction for most of us, it doesn't distract that person. The desires are there, but because of that haiba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the presence of khushu, this constant khushu, those desires, those shahwat don't really, um, you know, they don't, don't really bother the person so much. And, you know, this is, you know, some will say like the, you know, that the, the, the skia or the, the nafs has dissolved a little bit, you know, so that's the language that Armish have used, um, you know, that specific stations, you know, the, the nafs, the, I mean, the example they say is that the nafs dissolves like salt dissolves in water, right? it dissolves away. So, you know, those are the desires and of the, of the person. And um, 
the heedlessness, of course, with obviously the ghafla is, is also taken, you know, it's also taken care of. Because how can you khushu if there's ghafla? Okay? When you know somebody and when you understand, I mean, this is like the ma'arifah, that it's not that, 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 that zikr or that presence or that awareness, it's not what they say, but it's not, it's not circumstantial. It doesn't happen like, okay, like two times a day or three times a day. It happens all the time. It becomes part and parcel of who a person is. And, um, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, the, when we fall into ghaflat in general, so that sort of problem also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is also, you know, take care of that. And, you know, this is also a state where um, any kind of attachment with, you know, leisures of the dunya, and, you know, Ajay, alhamdulillah, if they don't have it, still alhamdulillah. So all of those things that the nafs was really like getting pulled towards, now the nafs does not want them anymore. So this is, you know, a process of tazkiyah as well. So we would call it tazkiyah, but, you know, when you want to talk about like specific like gayfiyah uh, from a Quranic language, this is what it is. This is what it is. Um, and this is where the azam becomes very strong as well. You know, Allah Ta'ala becomes matloob. It's not just something that is good to have or Allah really becomes the matloob of a person. And the azam, azam paham, azam becomes very like extremely strong azam. Azam means irada, like the irada, azam, himma, becomes so strong that now nothing else interrupts their will. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what I want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what I desire. And nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Like they, they are, you know, they're willing to, you know, make supreme sacrifices. Like all these attachments with the dunya. You know, I like the example of like rocket, right? Like when you, you know, it needs a little bit of like a terminal velocity to escape the gravity of the dunya. And so at this state, the terminal velocity is there. So it is able to lift off and get rid of that pull of the dunya and everything in the dunya and everyone in the dunya. And it's able to set itself free. So this is like true freedom. This is hurriya, right? When we talk about hurriya, it's not about, you know, what you can buy on Amazon. When we talk hurriya, it's to be free or detached from the attraction of the um, attraction of, um, of the dunya. And also within this state, you find what, you know, Haji Imdadullah Mahajar Mukhi Sahib Rahmatullah Ta'ala Leh, you know, he, you know, he asked Mufti Rashid Ahmad Sahib Gungohi Rahmatullah Ta'ala Leh, you know, what was your state before and after Nisbah? And one of the things he mentioned was that praise and dispraise, you know, by people become equal. If somebody praises you, subhanAllah, because it just returns back to Allah. Like, because of the dissolving of the nafs, now the praise go, you know, it just goes through you. Same thing with dispraise. It doesn't affect you. Like you don't get how dare does this person say about me or think about me and don't doesn't he know I'm such a big sheikh and you know so so that sort of bekar they just they just leave a person and you know Mukti Rashid Ahmad Kanguri Sahib Rahma he said that the praise and dispraise doesn't matter those things don't matter and the nazar on oneself that um, an eye and the lawamgi of the nafs is there as well. We, we, we don't say because mutma'inna is a very high state. And, you know, some mashayikh have actually debated if a person is able to even achieve that within this dunya or that's something that you just aspire to and you only get in nakhra. Right? Of course, sure. all the anbiya are excluded from it. But, you know, lawama is, of course, anybody can, you know, it's, it's, you know where, where the self-reproaching is, is there. Um, but you know, you aim for mutma'inna, you, you aim that your, your nafs reaches that level. Wallahu alam, you know, but there's some debate in that as well. So, I mean, this is what we call the serene submissiveness. And, you know, I, 
um, sweet submissiveness, whether you call it serene submissiveness or you call it, you know, sweet surrender. It's like sweet surrender to Allah. It's just like, Ya Allah Kareem, yeah. I'm present and Ya Allah Kareem, only you matter and Allah Ta'ala, whatever you do. You know, the complaining, the criticizing, all that just, it just leaves you. Hmm? It's, a, it's an interesting state and it's something that we should ask Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala gives us. Allah hmm? Ta'ala says, Allah Ta'ala says, Allah Ta'ala says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to experience it in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to appreciate these halal and kafiyah that only Allah ta'ala gives. And through the barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through the barakah of Quran, and through the barakah of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Amin ya rabbul alameen. Wa akhudah ghana. Alhamdulillah.